Hello people, in this video we want to look at open fracture. Earlier they used to call it as compound fracture but that is wrong. See, um, open fracture, um, if they ask you compound fracture in the exam, remember to write open fracture only. What is open? Open means it op it's open. So you can see here from the skin something is, uh, it is open basically. Uh, the wound is open, right? Uh, and close to me, see the skin is intact, but inside there's a fracture. So this is an open fracture and this is a closed fracture. Uh, so I, I kind of punch you and you have a fracture that will become a closed fracture. Uh, or uh, I take an, uh, you know, I I, uh, I do the same thing. But this time what happens from um, inside itself, the bone has come out and caused a open fracture. Okay, so this would be an open fracture. So in open fracture, you have two types. What are the two types in open fracture? You have um, internal, internally open fracture and externally open fracture. Internal, internal open fracture and external open fracture. What do you mean by this internal? Internal means what happened? I punched you, right? But the uh, fragment from inside pops out right to cause the open uh, open wound so that is internal open fracture what is external open fracture i take a knife stab you and cause the fracture so there is a knife wound right so that will be an external open fracture so are you getting it guys the the cause of the open fracture is coming external the cause of the in, uh, open fracture here is coming internally okay so that's it guys, two terminologies are there. Now let us do one thing, let's dive into this uh, topic directly into the textbook Maheshwari and read it. See here they are saying that compound fracture for open fracture is dropped, so you don't use it as compound fracture anymore, okay. So now you have only open fracture, if they ask you compound fracture, it is open fracture only. So you have closed fracture and open fracture, right, and uh, under open fracture you have two types, internally open, that is from within and externally open, that is uh, uh, the object causing the fracture lacerates the skin and soft tissue and then it breaks the bone, okay, result in an you know, externally open fracture. So why are they asking you this uh, in the exam? Because it has an additional problem of getting infected. Unlike a fracture that is within you, there is uh, this open fracture will bring in bacteria and other things, right, so there can be a uh, osteomyelitis, that is a bone infection, etc. That can be an infected wound. How is it going people? We are looking at uh, which topic? Open fracture, very good. Shall we now look at the treatment for this open fracture guys? Very important. So you have uh, phase 1 which is emergency care. Okay. And then you have phase 2 which is definitive care. Phase 2 is definitive care. Okay. And phase 3 is rehabilitation. Okay, so uh, let's look at the treatment guys of what? Of open fracture. Are you ready? Okay. So basically the whole intention here is to convert this open fracture into a closed fracture. Okay, you want to convert this open fracture into a closed fracture. You are scared of the infection. What do you do at the emergency care, at the site of accident? Wherever the bleeding is happening, you know all that, right? You will apply a tourniquet, so you will stop the bleeding. So hemorrhage, basically you have learned in trauma basics, right? H, A, B, C, D, E also if I remember, right? So hemorrhage is the first thing that you handle, right? In trauma. So if there is hemorrhage, tourniquet, etc., you will apply. So that much you know. Then uh, you will stop the bleeding. Then coming to... Uh, what will you what will you do? You'll wash the wound with the uh, clean tap water or saline, and you'll cover it with a clean cloth. That's it. Then you will splint it, so you'll immobilize the fracture. Then coming to uh, emergency department, what will you do once at the site of uh, uh, accident? You did all this at emergency care. What will you do? You will do wound care, right? You will wash the wound, aseptic conditions. You will maintain, etc. Then um, uh, they're talking about the bone. If it is hanging out, what will you do? So they want to replace the projecting bone, okay, and a piece of bone with intact soft tissue attachments which is hanging out of the wound, you should wash it and put it back in the wound, okay. So th that is all they are telling, it sounds very uh, weird actually. So there are two things, at accident site, okay, and then the other is at emergency care, right, at the emergency department, okay. So wound care you will do everywhere. Then at this emergency department itself, what you are doing people? So where are we currently in the emergency department? We are doing the phase one, that is the emergency care. So you will do splintage, right? How will you do splintage? These are some of the splints they are using in the uh, emergency department, guys. So basically, 
there are dustbins that you can even use at the site of um, accident. We'll show you that also. So these are the splints used in the emergency department. Uh, you can remember this Thomas splint, etc. Right. So these are some of the things that they will use for splinting at the site of the accident. Okay. So uh, just to immobilize the joint. Okay. So we have seen now emergency care at the accident site at emergency department. We have looked at what an emergency department. Same wound care you looked at. Let's write it here. Wound care, splinting. Then you will give antibiotics prophylactically, prophylactic antibiotics. Then they are talking about tetanus, prophylaxis. So you will give uh, tetanus short rate because this person could get, otherwise he will catch what? Clostridium tetani infection. Then analgesics as to relieve the pain. Okay. Then x-rays you will order to evaluate further. Okay. Then. Where are we currently guys? We are uh, we are done with this phase 1 emergency care right now. We have to move to the definitive care. Okay, let's look into the definitive care now. Here we are. So let's look at definitive care. So what will you definitive care? So basically, you want to fix the fracture. Same thing is there, right? Uh, rice and all that rest, ice. Then what is this? Compression, elevation and all that. But this is more emergency care. So let's put it here. So rice, we have moved it to emergency care. Okay. Now let us look at the definitive care. That is the wound debridement. Wound debridement, they have given some flow chart here. Look at this. Wound debridement, small puncture wound, leave it as it is. Open lacerated wound, primary closure. Doubtful lacerated wound, observe. Non-infection, then you can do closure. If it is infected, you do secondary closure. Infected wound, healing by secondary intention. So if it is a clean wound, then only they are talking about primary closure. That's all we can understand. Otherwise, if it is infected and all, delay, wait, watch, etc. So where were we here? In wound debridement. Okay. So wound debridement, almost always you will need. Then, definitive wound management. We told you, suturing the skin, etc. Basically, you will do fracture management. Okay. Fracture, how will you manage, guys? This is a whole world uh, that you have to learn, right? Orthopedics for every type of fracture, what you will do, etc. Anyways, the same thing they're talking about here. Immobilization, pins, plaster. This is some pins and plaster. Pins and plaster method of fixing the fracture. So there are many ways of fixing fracture, guys. So that itself will become a huge story. But anyways, we are talking here only about open fracture, just generally. Then you can do skeletal traction. Okay, in cases where there is circumferential loss of skin or the wound is big, it may not be possible to treat with plaster, right? In such cases, skeletal traction could be used to keep the fracture in good alignment until the wound heals. Then, after skeletal traction, external skeletal fixation. It provides stability to the fracture and permits access to virtually the whole circumference of the limb. Then there is internal fixation. See, it's not that um, you have to do this or that. You have to know all these things. For specific, uh, based on the case basis, you'll have to decide what to do. Okay. Internal fixation. What you do in internal fixation? Plates you will put, is it? Closed means what will you do? Closed method means you can use the intramedullary fixation, right? Anyways, you have to decide. This is the definitive care. You have the fracture. You have the x-ray in front of you. You decide what is best. Okay. There are many ways of fixing fractures. Lastly, we will do rehabilitation, guys. Rehabilitation means you will do what? Joint mobilization, muscle exercise, right? Mobilization of the injured limb. You have to help the person get back on life, right? Muscle exercise. All this you will I'm thinking this is not something that happens only in phase 3. This has to happen parallelly along with your definitive care, isn't it? Once you put splint and all that, you should teach them how to maintain it, manage it, mobilize, use the, uh, you know, uh, work on the muscles which are trapped inside the splint, etc. Okay. So in open fracture, what did you see? Open fracture, earlier it was called compound fracture. Now they don't use that term. Open means basically there is an open wound to the external world, right? It is not, the fracture is not simply that something is broken inside. There is a wound. So it can be internally caused. The, the 
the sharp object may be from inside the bone itself punching out to the outside world or external something has gone in and then caused the fracture so there's a wound anyways open open fracture uh, open fracture is uh, the problem here is there is risk of infection that is osteomyelitis it could be acute osteomyelitis the treatment you should do is uh, you want to try to convert this open fracture into a closed fracture the closed fracture will heal like a any other closed fracture inside something is broken right it will try to you will try to uh, unite it align it and all that so initially you will do emergency care in emergency care what will you do you will do uh, you will apply tourniquet stop hemorrhage if it is there clean wound care you will do splint it rises what rest ice compression elevation extra at emergency department again you will do wound care splint prophylactic antibiotics you can give tetanus prophylaxis you can give very important do not forget tetanus you will only think about infection means something to do with this uh, osteomyelitis and oxat you have to still think about other things like tetanus which is very common for any fall right analgesics um, any painkillers based on whether the person needs a normal nsaid or an opioid analgesic x-rays for uh, definitive care you will need that then coming to definitive care you will do wound debridement like we told you if it is uh, infected etc or you suspect infection you have to wait and watch and then only you can do a closure right delayed primary closure or a secondary closure then fracture management guys uh, how will you do you will you have learned so many things on how to manage the fracture skeletal traction external skeletal fixation internal fixing closed uh, uh, closed what was that closed methods are also there so many ways of fixing fraction uh, fracture as such rehabilitation you will do joint immobilization muscle exercise you can write more on that uh, how to manage your uh, splint cast etc hygiene etc Yes, there is also one classification of open fractures. Just look at this. This is called as some modified Gustilo and Anderson classification for open fractures. Gustilo Anderson. Okay, so they are saying type one, type two, type three. Only three types are there, guys. Type one, type two, type three. Okay, of what? Of open fractures. Can you say open fractures? Open fracture. Type one. Type one. Type two. Type two. Type three. Type three. Okay, so guys, uh, open fractures type one, type two, type three. Uh, one means the the wound is less than one centimeter. It is clean also. It is simple fracture, etc. Second one is uh, wound is greater than one centimeter. One centimeter means greater than one centimeter. Something okay. This is this much great. Okay, and then this one will be big. One centimeter. This one is big. Soft tissue damage is not extensive. Okay, but the wound size is more. No flaps. No avulsions. Simple fracture again. Then coming to three. Uh, third type of open fracture they are talking about um, tissue injury isn't it extensive soft tissue damage let's use a red for this type 3 open fracture so extensive soft tissue damage severe crush injury vascular injury contamination etc again this uh, type 3 they have divided into a b c 3 a 3 b 3 c sounds like some uh, reservation category okay 3a 3b 3c so what is this 3a soft tissue uh, adequate soft tissue cover on bone of bone okay though there is extensive tissue damage there is cover of bone then um, 3b they are saying there is uh, periosteal stripping with bone exposure major contamination and 3c which is the worst 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 3c they are saying extensive soft tissue damage uh, that's it extensive soft tissue damage okay so that's it guys uh, we have looked at uh, open fractures um, classification what open fracture is etc bye bye